Ok. You can see this musician who is playing the flute. So this is the Catherine Palace which is in front of us and the regular park which was the necessary part in front of every imperial palaces in the 18th century. Actually during the first owner of this palace, Catherine I, there used to be a fruit grove. But then the area was extended and different pavilions and monuments were built here. Uh, so some of them were brought from the summer garden and some were commissioned by Peter I from Venice. This park is based on the symmetric organization uh, around the space of this palace and trees and bushes were served as the construction staff's construction material. You know, this uh, Catherine Palace is very popular and during the hot season. Uh, so this is the line here just standing for, uh, stretching for several kilometers. So Catherine Palace, uh, you know, because uh, uh, Peter I uh, presented this palace to his wife Catherine I. Hence the name of this, Catherine, Catherine's Palace. Uh, all Zars and Zarinas, they used to spend their time, especially in summer, and it's not official name, but the summer royal residence. But before this, this area belonged to the Governor General of Peter I, Alexander Minshikov. Then in 1710, he presented this palace and this area to his wife, Catherine I. Uh, you know that uh, that uh, on this place, on this spot that would become the royal village, Tsarska Silo, stood a small manor like Zaris Hall for Zaris Mozia, that means a hillock, and it was marked uh, on the maps. Uh, and this uh, part, uh, these lands made a part of the Novgorodian Principality uh, and uh, in the 17th century these lands were conquered by Swedes and so hence the, the war was started like the Northern War over Swedes which lasted for 21 years and it uh, lasted for 21 years, it ended with a Russian victory over Swedes and it also provided the security of these lands and uh, the access to the Baltic Sea. Uh, for two centuries, the Tsarskoye Silo royal village uh, was considered to be the summer royal residence. And after the revolution in 1918, this palace was turned into the museum and now it's open for uh, all visitors. Of course, during the Second World War, uh, Pushkin was seized by Nazis and this park and the palace were destroyed, awfully destroyed. And uh, so the old uh, pavilions were reconstructed as well as small palaces and the palace itself and the trees were replanted again. On your left you can see the bus, the upper bus or uh, the uh, in the 18th century it was known as the washroom of their highnesses because it was intended for uh, high guests, I mean for emperors and empresses, they like to wash, uh, to do washing here. Uh, so it was awfully destroyed in the 18th century and then it was and during the Second World War of course and then it was restored. Now every pavilion and small uh, house is a museum. In front of us you can see the transparent ponds and in the 18th century you know that uh, uh, swans uh, used to sail, used to be here and settled here and it was very very beautiful. Uh, the park is very spacious, you know, and it's very peaceful and quiet and you can walk here and just breathe with fresh air. In front of us you can see the Cameron Gallery. Cameron Hall was also the architect and leading architect who built a uh, uh, Catherine Palace. Uh, so, and in the 18th century it used to be like the observation platform and now it's an observation platform because all guests they stood on the upper floor and they watch all performances and fireworks here just they were arranged on this field, on this area. Now on the top floor there is uh, the collection of bronze busts uh, made at the foundry of Academy of Arts. And also, uh, if you are here, you can see from the top uh, the whole park. So it's also the observation platform. On the ground floor, uh, all ladies in waiting rooms were remodeled and they are opened for temporary exhibitions. Uh, we are approaching the Cameron Gallery. And in front of us, you can see a uh, ladies garden. And actually in summer, it's flooded with different kinds of flowers and roses as well. 
and from here you can see the Agus rooms. You know they were reconstructed as many uh, pavilions are uh, in this garden, uh, in Catherine Garden, I mean. And um, this um, also the elegant pavilion, which is decorated with uh, different, I mean, sculptural groups. And uh, on the ground floor they used, they were used for cold baths and uh, the Agus rooms, you know, just like an exhibition hall and uh, so that the combination of Ural stone like marble with Agus uh, that was the kind of Agus and Jasper, that was the kind of Agus so these Agus rooms uh, have been restored and now they're open in front of this camera gallery you can see the bronze sculpture groups Hercules and Flora they're based on Greek mythology from here opens a fine view to the pond and it's not so deep and during the 18th century ladies and gentlemen they also traveled by boat accompanied by orchestra so actually traveling by boat this tradition started from the reign of Peter the first in the center you can see the uh, hall on the island which was used for performances and concerts and uh, actually just uh, it's a smoke it's a little bit foggy but in the distance you can see the building of the Admiralty which was used just uh, for keeping rowing and sailing stuff and uh, it was equipped with uh, cage birds for singing birds you know so it was uh, designed in the gothic style and now it's a restaurant it's a crow and actually you can meet uh, different birds like this or sometimes squirrels it's a building of grotto and actually it was uh, built by Italian architect Rastrelli who wanted to decorate it with seashells and tufts but his idea wasn't brought uh, uh, to life and it was completed by Italian architect Rinaldi now it's used for exhibition purposes and sometimes it's used for choir you can listen to music here in the distance you can see uh, the former Turkish bars actually it imitates the uh, Turkish style and it was commissioned by Empress Catherine the Great just to commemorate the Russian Turkish war in 1828-29 and it, it consists of two gilded cupolas and the turret minaret but this building was already destroyed as well as many sites uh, in this park so it was reconstructed uh, and it was the last buildings to be reconstructed in this park so you can see a lot of ducks and people are feeding these ducks the uh, different families, you know, consisting of dead, mom and their kids. You can see different battles, just they're fighting uh, to catch their meal. They're very hungry. And it used to be the fish canal, a very artificial canal uh, for breeding the fish, so which uh, uh, was specially used for eating uh, during the royal dinner. We are walking along the park and you can see different colors. Uh, we are uh, approaching the Hermitage Pavilion. Uh, which uh, was built in the 18th century and this name, uh, the Hermitage, it is borrowed from French word that means Hermit's dwelling or solitary corner and it was intended only uh, for the members of imperial family. So this isolated building, uh, as usual, was surrounded by drawbridges and moats and it was a kind of entertainment here inside. Uh, so that was a special desk, you know, uh, the central part of this desk was raised from top up to the, uh, from down to the top with all the dishes and meal which uh, were left by uh, ladies and gentlemen and uh, so they could leave a note or ring the bell uh, for their, uh, just to take their ordered uh, meal. So this, this desk, this plain desk uh, uh, is also exhibited inside and uh, the Hermitage Pavilion uh, now it's open for all vis visitors. Or we can say that uh, it would be equipped with hydraulic tables that would appear during uh, the dinners to dine uh, during uh, lunch uh, without uh, or dinner without assistance of servants. 
nearby the hammock, which you can see the hammockage kitchen, uh, which was used for kitchen purposes, of course. And uh, uh, actually, it has and it had the dual function because uh, it used to be like the second entrance to this uh, Catherine Park, and it was known as the Red Gates. So you can see this hammockage kitchen. And now it's a bar. Oh, it's a cafe. Beautiful view from here. You can you can recognize the grotto building, the Cameron Gallery, which is in the distance, and uh, the hall on an island. Uh, I mean, just which was used for concerts and performances. And we are approaching the former Admiralty building, which was designed in the Gothic style. There are a lot of dogs here. And in front of us you can see uh, the column. Actually, uh, this is this is the Chesma column, which was commissioned by Empress Catherine the Great to commemorate the Russian victory over Chesma, Chesma Bay, uh, during the Russian-Turkish War in 1770s. So the height of this column is 25 meters, and it's decorated with models of ships. Uh, so in uh, ancient Rome, it was a tradition when uh, Romans, they also decorated different kinds of monuments with ships or the, uh, conquered by, uh, I mean, from enemy ships. So, and it symbolized the dominion over the country and over the sea. The column is crowned with a bronze eagle, uh, breaking the half moon or crescent. So eagle, it's associated with the powerful Russian state and uh, a crescent, uh, it's defeated Turkey. And in the distance you can see again the former Turkish bars.